We're going to consider the region of the space enclosed in the first quadrant by y equals x, y equals squared x. And now we're calculating the volume of the region revolved around the x-axis. Now there's the answer, so that's, that's our goal, but don't force it to be that, just compare. Again, the first thing that you do when you solve a problem like this is graph the region over which you're working. Draw an accurate graph. So my graph of y equals x bisects the first quadrant. And so if that's one, that's one. With the square root of x, I know it goes through 0, 0, because if I plug in 0 for x, I get out 0 for y. If I plug in 1 for x, I get 1 out for y, so it goes to this point, but it looks a lot like this. So this is y equals square root of x, y equals x. There's no sin to putting it in your calculator and graphing it, but make sure that when you put it on your paper, you have an accurate rendition. Now I'm actually taking this this region right here and I'm revolving it around the x-axis to create a different shape. So if I say drew the bottom half of this, I am no artist but I will do the best I can. This thing is going to revolve around the axis this way and if you can imagine that you'd have like a parabola shape outside and a v-shaped inside. Now what I have to do here also is slice this guy find the volume of each slice because that's what we're going for is the volume and then add up all the total volumes. So if I draw my slice, let's draw it right here, just a skinny little slice. I have to think about the, what the volume of that slice is. Now besides drawing a really accurate graph that's labeled properly, you want to draw what your slice is going to look like approximately. So I know that my slice will have an outer edge that looks like this, like a coin. However, this part here is open, so there will be a small opening in the center, like that. So if I think about the volume of my slice, this looks like a washer, like something you would use in plumbing. That's a washer. And if I want to find the volume of something that looks like a washer, the volume of my slice, that's going to be pi r radius of the big circle squared h so pi r squared h that's that's a volume of a real th uh, of a cylinder which this is a cylinder if you ignore the hole in the middle you have a, a, a height and you have a round top and that is a real thin cylinder more like a coin but i have to take away the bit in the center that's the hole so that's pi r squared of the small radius times h. All I have to do then is figure out what all these silly things mean. Pi is pi. h is going to be the same in each case, but the rest of it is going to be different. Now, h is the thickness of my washer, the thickness of my slice. Now, since it's measured, the width of this thing is measured along the x-axis, we will call h delta x. And notice I can factor out an h and a pi out of both, so I'm going to rewrite it like this. So delta x is my height. The radius of my big rectangle goes from the center to the outer edge, and that length right there is measured by the graph of y equals square root of x. So square root of x squared, so that's my big radius squared, minus my small radius, which is just this guy right here. And that to get that length for any value of x, I'll use the equation y equal x. So that'll be x squared. Simplifying that a little bit, I get pi times x minus x squared delta x. Now that's the volume on just one slice. That's what you always want to focus on. These kinds of problems, just do one slice, one slice only, and then you're going to finally add them up in the end very last step. So I'm going to add up pi times x minus x squared dx and the interval over which I'm working, well the slice that's furthest to the right will be when x is 0 and the slice that I'm going to cut furthest to the left here is when x is 1. There was a 1 there, I kind of covered it up. So that's what I'm going to integrate. Again that's a really easy thing to integrate. Go ahead and do it on your own. But you should come up with the answer of 0 0.5236. Now think about what unit of measure it should be. It is volume. 
So unit of measure should be units cubed. Don't forget that because this is an application.